Hi, this is William again with Dorsey & Company. In this tutorial, I will show you how to select a louver using caps. First off, you need to know what application this louver would be used for. What type of building, is it intake, exhaust, transfer, relief, how it needs to operate, the air flows, the static, and if there are any special environmental concerns, such as wind-driven rain, Miami data requirements, and more. Here is a list of the many types of louvers GreenHack offers. I won't go into them all, but typically the more popular are the drainable blade, wind-driven rain, and acoustical. It's important to note that the combination louver dampers are available, but the damper portion won't meet low leakage ratings at this time. GreenHack also offers architectural grills as well, but I won't cover those in this presentation. Before we dive into how to select a louver, I want to cover AMCA 500L briefly. There are two tests in AMCA 500L that are important to what type of louver you want to select. The water penetration test simulates four inches of rain per hour being poured down the front of the louver in sheets, while an intake fan pulls air through the louver between 0 and 1250 feet per minute free area velocity. The point of water penetration is defined as 0 0.01 ounces of water being entrained in the airstream and making it through the louver per square foot of free area. A good rule of thumb for sizing louvers for this test are if the beginning point of water penetration, or BPWP, is 1,000 feet per minute, then you will want to size the louver for roughly 750 to 850 feet per minute free area velocity. This only matters for intake louvers since exhaust louvers will be blowing air out of them. You only need to be concerned with the pressure drop. Regardless of how you size the louver, you will want to make sure there are provisions to manage water collecting inside of the louver. The other test is the wind-driven rain test. There are two test conditions for this test. The first is a 29 mile per hour simulated wind blowing towards the louver with three inches of rain per hour being sprayed into the airstream. The next and more extreme condition is a 50 mile per hour simulated wind with eight inches of rain per hour being sprayed into the airstream. For most places in Washington, this seems like a much better test based on the weather conditions we often encounter. The louvers are then graded based on their effectiveness in rejecting the water from class A being the best to class D being the worst. A few more notes before we dive into the process. The wind-driven rain test is more realistic and will reject more water, but they are more expensive. Weighing the need for implementing water management provisions and the initial cost are important. These provisions may not be necessary if a wind-driven rain louver is selected, but that is up to the engineer. Ranking the more common louver types by effectiveness in rejecting the wind-driven rain is the non-drainable louver, then the drainable head, then the drainable blade. These louvers may or may not be subjected to the water penetration tests, depending on the manufacturer. Most of GreenHex louvers are AMCA certified for water penetration and air performance, if not also for wind-driven rain. For reference, a standard 4-inch drainable blade louver would normally receive a Class C or D if subjected to the wind-driven rain test. The next best model is the wind-driven rain horizontal blade louver design followed by the wind-driven rain vertical blade louver design being the most effective design. Roughly, the scale can also be a price scale with the vertical blade louver being the most expensive option and the non-drainable louver being the least. This obviously depends on manufacturer, model, size, and more, but sometimes you're going to have to select a more expensive louver based on the environmental conditions. All right, now let's dive into the process. Depending on what kind of louver you're looking for, it will depend on what catalog you're looking for. So most louvers would be in this louver products catalog. Um, that's the one I'd normally use. But if you're looking for a severe duty louver product, we also have that is available. And then there's also an architectural grills catalog as well. But when I select a louver, like I said, normally I go into the louver products catalog. I grab this catalog, I open it up to page two or three, it's on the inside cover, and that's our selection guide. Normally, based on the information I know, the velocities are looking for, what, where this is going, what type of aesthetics they're looking for, uh, blade depth, I can narrow it down to typically 
uh, one or two models, uh, maybe three. Then I go and look at the detailed model information further in the catalog, and I can find out if that louver meets what the engineer is looking for. Um, then if I can narrow it down even more, great. If not, I'll go into caps and I'll start my selection. And so that's what I'm going to do now. All right, now we've reached the caps portion of this tutorial, and I'm going to try to make it quick because I know this tutorial is running a little bit long. I'm going to show you how to select two different types of louvers using two different methods. I'm going to show you how to select them both by performance because I think selecting by performance is really important. I've seen some louvers that aren't selected that way and their actual pressure drops can be a quarter of an inch to a half inch higher than what's expected. So I'm going to just jump right into it. I already know the first model, what I want. It's an ESD 435. It's a drainable blade louver with a large free area. I'm just going to double click on that, give my mark a name. Click select by performance volume, width, and height. I'm going to look at 2000 CFM and 24 by 24. This error means that my velocity, my free area velocity, is higher than my beginning point of water penetration. I'm going to show you how you can override that if you know there's no way water is going to get through this louver. It's just trying to warn you. Now you can see my velocity it's 1100 feet per minute. It's higher than my beginning point of water penetration. And my pressure drops may be a little bit high, but not too bad. I'm going to deselect that and scale up to 28 by 28. Now my pressure drops lower. I like that. My velocity is right around where I want to be. Maybe a little low, but since my beginning point of water penetration is a little lower than 1000, it's in a pretty good area. My free area is also really high, which is good news. Here I can select different frame and blade thicknesses, uh, welded construction, different colors. Uh, I want to select whatever you, whatever you need is right there. Configuration, bird screen, insect screen. Normally I see probably half inch mesh bird screen. And then I'm going to just jump into tagging this louver and then going into the new model. For this other model, I don't know exactly what model I want, but I know it's for a data center and I don't want any water getting in this louver. So I'm going to go to louvers, stationary, double click, louver type, I know it needs to meet wind driven rain, I know it needs to have that AMCA certification and I know the frame depth has to be four inches. Now I'm left with two different models, the horizontal blade and the vertical blade models. I'm gonna select them both. I can see the free areas are a little different and the costs are a little different. Select by performance. Again, it's an intake and I'm gonna do volume width and height, 2000 CFM. I'm gonna go a little bit larger since I know my free area is smaller on these than my last louver, so my louver now has to be larger. Show available sizes. Now I can compare both models. I can see that the pressure drop on the horizontal blade is half as much as the pressure drop on the vertical blade. This beginning point of water penetration doesn't really matter on these wind driven rain louvers because they're so effective. That's the max end of that test. Remember I mentioned that. The AMCA test is the, the top end is the 1250. My free area is less here. I can see the percentage differences and everything. I don't want any rain to get in there, but I also can't afford a quarter of inch pressure drop. I can't go any bigger. Uh, I have size constraints, so I'm going to go with this horizontal blade louver. Now I can tag it. And again, I can select a finish like I mentioned. Maybe I'll go baked enamel on this one instead. And I'll go ivy. Again, over here, I can select bird screen or I can even go to insect screen. And that would conclude the end of our tutorial. Thank you, and I hope this was helpful.